Hey y'all, let's cover lesson 13, simplifying expressions. Okay, recall the commutative and associative properties of multiplication. If A, B, and C are any integers, then A times B is equal to B times A. That means you can change the order. All right, um, also, a times B times C is equal to A times B times C. Uh, you can change the grouping. Okay, now we can use these properties to rearrange or reorder multiplication in order to simplify expressions. We don't know how to multiply letters together yet or a number and a letter but we do know how to multiply two numbers. All right, so we're gonna simplify two times three X and that three X is multiplied, it's three times X. So this is just two times three times X. So we can just group the two times three and get six times X, which is six X. Okay. Um, the other one is simplify negative five times seven y. So if you pause, try this one yourself and then come back and do this. That's what I'd like you for you to do the rest of this lesson and get comfortable with doing that moving forward that I'll show you how to do it once. And then I want you to pause the video, attempt it yourself, and then watch the video to make sure you've done it right. Okay. All right. So assuming you're coming back, we've got negative five times seven times y. So we can say negative five times seven times y, which is, well, five times seven is 35. The signs are opposites, so it's negative or negative times a positive if you think of it that way, and then y. And those are my answers. Okay, the statement um, two times three x equal to six x is called an identity, all right? That is the left-hand side and the right-hand side are the same for all values of x. So let's, let's try out a couple of values. Um, if we say that two times three times, um, let's just say five is equal to six times five. All right, well, three times five is 15. I'm just gonna bring this down. Six times five is 30. Two times 15 is 30. And we already know it's 30, so that checks out. All right, let's try it with a negative number, see if it works out as well. Um, two times three times a negative number. And let's just choose negative five this time. All right, well, negative five. Five times three is 15. The signs are different, or it's positive times a negative, so that's a negative. The signs are different, so there's gonna be a negative. Six times five is 30. Two times 15 is 30. The signs are different, so it's a negative, and they are equal, so that checks out. All right, simplify negative three T times negative five. So I can take this and go negative three times negative five and then times T. Three times five is 15. The signs are the same, so it's positive. And I can just bring down the T. That's my answer. Please try the rest of these on your own and then come back to check to see if you got them the same as I did. All right, if you're back, welcome. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Just joking. All right, so this is going to be negative 8 times 5a. 8 times 5 is 40. The signs are different. Negative times a positive, so it's a negative with an a. Okay, negative 3 times negative 2, and then x times y. 3 times 2 is 6. The signs are the same, so it's positive. And then x, y. 
four times, oh, how do you do this? Negative four times five, and then A times B. Four times five is 20. The signs are different. Negative times a positive is a negative. And I can just bring down the A, B. Ooh, we got three now. So two times three times four, and then A times B times C. Two times three is six. And yes, you could multiply them straight across. Six times four is 24. And I'm just bringing down the ABC. All right, we've got negative three times negative two times negative four. These are all together. And then we've got X times Y times Z. All right, three times two is six. The signs are the same, so it's positive times negative four. Six times four is 24. Signs are different. Positive times a negative is a negative. And then I'm just bringing down my X, Y, Z. And there's your answer for that one. Okay. Now we're going to introduce, which we've talked about this one before. This is the distributive property. Um, we, we used it in this exact same problem before. So let's, let's talk about that. Distributive property just means that you've got a number on the outside of a parenthesis. And inside the parenthesis, you have two integers that are combined by addition or subtraction. And it has to be addition or subtraction. So B plus C means that I'm going to multiply the A times B plus, you take the sign from the middle, A times C. And you'll find that I'm drawing these arrows each time. And I, gosh forbid, y'all, I swear, even in my college algebra students, they're still struggling with this. So get a good hold on it now, because if you have a weak foundation, you're going to struggle later in your math career. All right. So the next one, just preaching today. And now it's A times C. All right. So that's what we're going to do down here. We're going to go two times three and two times four. Just that's not what we would do with this situation with this problem, because remember, you'd have to do parentheses first and then multiply the two. We're doing this because you're going to have some variables and I want to teach you how to do it now with numbers that you know before we add in the variables. So, yes, I understand we're doing this not the way we should. So this is just two times three, the sign in the middle, plus, and then two times four. Two times three is six, plus two times four is eight. Six plus eight is 14. Now, if we would have done it the other way, we would have gotten two times three plus four is seven, two times seven is 14, okay? All right, let's use the distributive property for the rest of these problems it looks like. So again, I'm gonna use the arrows. Oh, so sorry, y'all, pausing, pausing. I have that turned off. Sorry about that. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to draw my arrows. Notice it's not all numbers now. We've got that variable in there, which is why we want, I wanted to prepare you for it. So we're going to go three times the 4x plus three times the 5. So three times the 4x plus three times 5. Well, three times 4 is 12. And then I'm going to bring down my x plus three times five is 15. You cannot add or subtract apples and oranges. So, or numbers that have variables and numbers that don't. So we've got a number here that has a variable and a number that does not. This is our answer. You will not make it anything less than that. That is it, you are done. All right, please get comfortable with, please do not add the 12 and the 15. That is very, 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 very wrong because the 15 doesn't have an X with it. Okay, so let's go with the two. I'm gonna rewrite this one, five Z plus seven. I want you to pause the video and try this yourself and then come back and watch it. So I'm gonna use my arrows, two times five Z plus two times seven plus two times seven. All right, two times five is 10. Z plus two times seven is 14. That is my answer. 
Again, do the same thing down here, pause the video, then come back and watch me. Five times three X minus five times two. The sign that goes in between the two is the sign that's in the binomial. So five times three Z, no, that's an X, X minus five times two, all right? There's so many ways to think about this. I could have kept that as plus five and then made the two negative. That's another option of what I could have done. But if I have found that this is a non-issue if you just bring the sign down, okay? It ha it works every single time. So if you're if you're comfortable with that, please do just do that. And then you don't have to worry about the signs as much. Five times three is 15 X minus five times two is 10, done. Again, pause the video, come back and watch it. All right, seven times four is 28. Well, I'm gonna write it, seven times four, A, minus seven times five. Seven times four is 28, A, minus seven times five is 35. Done. Again, pause and then come back. All right, negative nine times two T plus seven. So this is gonna be negative nine times two T plus negative nine times seven. This is over both. So nine times two is 18. The signs are different. Negative times a positive is a negative. Don't forget your T. All right, plus nine times seven is 63. A negative times a positive is a negative. Okay, so this is gonna change our sign. Negative 18 T, positive times a negative is a negative 63. That's our answer. Remove parentheses. Okay. So negative five times four and negative five times negative three Y. So negative five, I'm just gonna put it in parentheses, uh, times four minus negative five times three Y. All right, five times four is 20. The signs are different. Negative times a positive is a negative. Minus five times three is 15. So Y, the signs are different. So that would be a negative. Negative and a negative is a positive. Just clean that up. You cannot have two signs next to each other in your answer, and that is your final answer. Please notice that all of these up to this point have had the variable in the first number, and in this last one, it has the variable in the second number. That's okay. That's okay. It's You can have it in many different places. You can have it in both places. You get crazy like that. All right, when writing your final answer, you want to use a few sim as few symbols as possible, which is what I was just saying. You don't wanna have a negative negative down here. You want it to have a positive. You don't want a positive negative. You want it just one sign. So instead of negative nine X plus negative 15, you're gonna write negative nine X, positive times a negative is a negative 15. So there's that answer. Four Y minus negative 20, is 4y, a negative times a negative is a positive 20, all right? Now we're gonna take an integer and we're going to distribute it, we're still distributing, over three, it's a trinomial, three terms. The same exact concept. I'm gonna take that negative five times two x minus negative five, times three Y minus, oh no, plus, that's a plus, uh, negative five times eight. Okay. All right, five times two is 10. The signs are opposite, negative times a positive is a negative X, bring it down the subtraction sign. That's all I'm doing here. Five times three is 15. A uh, negative times a positive is a negative, and it's a y, plus 
five times eight is 40, negative times a positive, uh, signs are different, so it's negative. Okay, now we're gonna clean this up because we don't like this and we don't like this. Negative 10X, it's not pretty math and we wanna have pretty math. Negative 10X, negative times a negative is a positive, 15Y. Positive times a negative is a negative 40. That is my answer. Please pause the video, attempt this next one on your own, and then come back. All right, I'm gonna distribute that negative three over this trinomial. So negative three times four A minus negative three times five B plus negative three times seven, all right? Three times four is 12. The signs are different. Negative times a positive is a negative A. Bring down my subtraction. Three times five is 15. The signs are different, so it's negative and B. Plus three times seven is 21. The signs are different. Negative times a positive is a negative. All right, let's make it pretty. So we've got negative 12A. Don't have to do anything there. Here we have a negative times a negative. That's a positive. 15, don't forget your B. And now we have positive times a negative, which is negative 21. All right, one of the things I'm gonna to have to start doing here, or you're gonna to have to start doing, is notice if anything could be combined. It's called simplifying. So we've got an A, we've got a B, and we've got a regular integer. These cannot be combined. Please don't feel like you would need to do that. You don't, that is your final answer. All right, multiplying by negative one. Well, negative one times anything is going to change the sign of that anything, right? Um, or you could think of it as negative A is equal to negative one times A, which is what we've been doing all along. Because whenever you multiply a negative, here, right here, negative times a negative, you're assuming there's a negative one out here and you're multiplying one times 15 is 15, negative times a negative is a positive. That's what we've been doing this entire time we've been doing these. We've been assuming that that negative is a negative one and we're, we're just treating it the same way. So let's remove these parentheses. Notice there's no number outside the parentheses because if there's no number, it's always an assumed one. Never zero because if you multiply anything by zero, it's zero. It's always an assumed one. So you're going to take that negative one times A, I'm just, just distributing it, um, plus negative one times B. All right. And that becomes, well, one times A is A. The signs are different, so it's negative. Plus one times B is B. The signs are different, so it's negative. All right, now I've got a positive and a negative here. I can all, the same thing here. It's assuming it's a one. One times B is B. The signs are different, so it's negative. And that's how we get the answer. All right, please pause and do this one yourself. All right, so we've got negative one times A minus B. All right, well, that's equal to negative one times A minus B. I'm gonna distribute. I just rewrote it, I don't know why. Um, one times A is A, signs are different, so it's negative. One times B is, well, I'm gonna go minus. Um, I'm sorry, I'm skipping steps for y'all. I'm, I'm not supposed to be doing this. Negative one times A minus negative one times B. A times one is, a negative minus one times B is B. Signs are different, so opposite. Now we can clean it up. Negative times a negative is a positive B. Okay. Let me know if y'all have any questions on that. Goodness. Somebody's just meowing. All right. Let me pause for a second. I need a minute. Sorry about that, I had to get the voice of lovings. All right, remove parentheses. Well, that just means simplify, all right? 
So again, we're going to assume there's a negative one out here. So it's negative. Sure, come on. Five minus seven U plus three T. It just changes the signs on each one. That is it. Okay, same thing for over here. Negative six minus two X plus four Y minus five Z. It just changes the sign. Negative times a positive is a negative. Negative times a negative is a positive. Negative times a positive is a negative. Negative times a negative is a positive five Z. And that is my answer. All right, a term which I've been using this entire time is just, it's a single variable or a product of something. It's, is a single uh, variable, or it could be a constant. It could be just a number uh, or the product of a number. Product is multiplication. Um, a coefficient, it, let's see here, how can I say this? It could be a coefficient of variable, which like five X, five would be the coefficient. Coefficient. And a variable. He is just full of it today. All right, so here's some terms. Here's some examples. Um, negative seven x, uh, 2y, those are all considered terms. Each individual thing is called a term, all right? So the terms in an algebraic expression are separated by addition symbols. Addition symbols, okay? Identify the terms in the algebraic expression. For each term, Identify its coefficient and variable part. Sorry, they're working next door again. So terms, goodness. We want to know what terms are, what their coefficients are. You need to understand the different things and um, the variables. Let me put that over here. I don't want to mess that up. Variables. All right, so we've got the terms 3x squared, uh, 5xy, 9y squared and 12. The coefficients are the numbers in front of the variables. So 3, 5, 9, and 12. The variables are x squared, xy, y squared, and then there is none for the last one. It's just the constant. All right. This one, I'm going to move it over a little bit more. Terms, I would like for you to try this one on your own and then come back and see what I did in variables. These guys. All right, so it looks like this is an A cubed. All right, so that's A cubed is the first term. Negative 3A squared B. Negative 3A squared B positive 3a squared b, no, ab squared. And the last one is negative b cubed, okay? Because we would have to change each of these to make sure that the signs are represented. Okay, the coefficient is the number in front of the variable. So for this first one, the variable is a cubed, the coefficient is one. Can't be zero, even though you don't see anything there. If it was zero, then there wouldn't be a variable because zero times anything is zero. We would have no variable. So because we have a variable, the coefficient has to be one. For the next one, the coefficient is negative three. The variable is a squared b. All right. The next one, the coefficient is three, and the variables are a and b squared. The last one, this is a tricky trick. Remember, if there's nothing, that, there's not a number there, there has to be a one, but this one is negative. And then the Variables are B3, okay? Here we go. Two terms are called like terms if they have identical parts. 
if they have identical, and it can be no difference, variable parts. All right. So, um, 2x and 3x is our example. Two terms are called unlike terms if they have different, different, even slightly different variable parts. So uh, 2x and 3y, they are different. There's a reason we need to know this, right? And you'll see that here in just a moment. So classify each of the following pairs as either like terms or unlike terms. It doesn't matter what the coefficients are. The three and the negative seven do not matter. The only things that matter is what are their variable parts. These are both x, so these are like terms. This is y and y squared. So these are not, these are unlike terms, unlike terms. T and U, unlike terms. Ah, A cubed and A cubed, these are like terms. Notice I'm not even paying attention to what the coefficients are. It doesn't matter. All that matters are the, the terms like, the variables like, or unlike. All right, like terms, here's the magic, can be combined and simplified. All right, and we're only speaking about addition and subtraction because multiplication, division, that all can happen with unlike terms. But with like terms, that's just all we're dealing with, they can be combined and simplified, but all you need to do is the distributive property. So we can think of this as three plus seven, y. Seven plus three is 10, y. All right, the other way to look at this is three y plus seven y is 10 y. Okay. We're going to use the distributive property for the next piece as well. Sorry, this is a long lecture. All right. Using the distributive property to combine like terms, if possible, in each of the following expressions. So we've got x squared and x squared. We're golden. We can combine these. So this is just negative 5 minus 9 x squared, if you want to think of it that way. 5 and 9, the signs are the same, so we have to add them and keep the sign and bring down the x squared. If it helps you to see it the other way, negative 5x squared minus 9x squared, um, the signs are the same. The main thing is these are the same, so they're just going to be brought down. The 5 and the 9, the signs are the same, so we add them and keep the sign. Okay, the next one. Are they like terms? Yes, they are. So that means we can combine their coefficients. The A, B is going to be there. Five and seven have different signs. We subtract and take the sign of the larger number. Seven minus five is two. The seven is positive. So there we go. Okay. Two more. Um, we've got four Y cubed minus seven y squared. These are unlike terms. These cannot be combined. Cannot be combined. There are unlike terms. So what would you do in this case? That's what you would do. That is your answer, okay? The next one, three xy squared minus seven xy squared. All right, these are exactly the same terms. So I'm going to go 3 minus 7, and then I'll put my xy squared. The signs are different, so I subtract and take the sign of the larger number, and then I'm going to bring my xy squared down. Okay. 
All right, to combine like terms efficiently, you combine, uh, add or subtract, coefficients. And you keep the variable parts, the coefficients of the numbers. And keep the variables. Parts. Okay. So for this part, negative 9y minus 8y, can we combine them first of all? Yes, they are like terms. We can combine them. So all I'm looking at now is the negative nine minus eight. The signs are the same. I add them and keep the signs. Nine plus eight is 17. The signs are the same. I keep the sign and I'm bringing along the variable for the ride. That is it. The next one, the signs, the variables are the same so I can combine them. So now all I'm looking at and I can just put y to the fifth here and my answer is gonna go in front of it. Negative three plus four, the signs are different. So I subtract four minus three is one and take the sign of the larger number. I'm done. The other way I could write this is just y to the fifth. I can use that as my answer as well. Remember, you do not have to have that one as your coefficient. All right. Negative three u squared plus two u squared. Well, u squared is gonna be in my answer. Now I'm only gonna focus on my coefficients, the numbers. Negative three plus two, the signs are different. I subtract and take the sign of the larger number, okay? But I don't wanna represent that one, so it's just negative u squared. All right. The instructions simplify is a generic term that means combine like terms. It means to write the expression Write the expression using as few terms as possible, which means combine like terms. All right, one way to accomplish this to, to combine like terms. and you will hear me say both. Um, also remove parentheses using um, the distributive. Okay, also remove parentheses using distributive. Oh, I think they're tearing the uh, concrete off the wall over here, if I remember correctly. That's going to be fun to hear. All right, so simplify. We've got, oh gosh, we've got a bunch of things here. 2x plus 3y minus 5x plus 8y. Ooh, we need to get these uh, terms that are like together and away from each other. So I've got a 2x. Do I have another x here? Yes. Minus 5x. Because remember, I can move these around as long as I keep their signs with them. I'm going to bring that plus 3y plus 8y. I can combine these two, and I can combine these two. Um, I'm going to have an x for this one. The signs are different, so I'm going to subtract. 5 minus 2 is 3, and take the sign of the larger number, plus keep the y. 3 plus 8 is 11, and that's my answer. Done. Do you have to rearrange these in order to combine them? No, I'm doing it just to get you comfortable with this experience. My big thing though is, and I see this on exams all the time that people forget uh, a term in there somewhere. So sometimes I'll have to go through and just mark, mark them out to make sure that I've gotten them all, all right? So let's simplify this next one. Oh my gosh, there's lots of things happening here. Um, we've got negative two X minus three minus this, this has to be distributed. This has to be distributed over the parentheses. So I'm gonna just bring down my negative two X minus, I'm gonna do this over here, negative two X minus three. So this is a negative times a positive is a negative three X and negative times a positive is a negative four. All right, now I'm gonna put my two my terms together that belong. 
negative 2x minus 3x minus 3 minus 4. All right, I'm going to have an x for this one. 2, negative 2 and negative 3, the signs are the same, so I add them and keep the sign. Now I've got negative 3 minus 4. The signs are the same, so I add them and keep the sign. There's my answer. All right. Oof. We're going to distribute twice here. I'm going to rewrite this. 2 times 5 minus 3x minus 4 times x plus 3. This 2 has to be distributed, and this negative 4 has to be distributed. 2 times 5 minus 2 times 3x. Minus 4, well, I'm gonna, how do I want to do this? Yeah, minus 4 times x, and then mm, plus, oh, there's a plus there, plus negative 4 times 3. There we go, that makes sense. Because remember, you want to keep that plus sign. All right, 2 times 5 is 10 minus 2 times 3 is 6 x minus 4 times x is 4 x plus 4 times 3 is 12 negative times a positive is a negative all right the last thing i need to do for this one is to get rid of this so positive times a negative is negative 12. i'm going to bring everything else down all right now i want to combine like terms so negative 6x minus 4x, this is a positive 10, plus 10 minus 12. So be careful with that. That's a plus. The signs are the same. So we add them and keep the sign. The signs are different. We subtract them and take the sign of the larger number. Okay. All right. The other thing you should understand is you could also write this as negative 2 minus 10x. Either one of those answers is correct. All right. So you could pull your, your um, constants, your numbers out front, and your x's in the back. It doesn't matter. All right. Simplify. Now we've got, it's, it's two binomials, so negative eight times a binomial minus eight times a different binomial. So, and then we're gonna combine our like terms. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go negative eight times, I'm gonna rewrite this, three x squared y minus nine x y. And then I've got minus eight times seven x squared y minus eight x y. All right. Uh, negative, I'm just distribute to each stinking one of these. Negative eight times three. Well, eight times three is 24. Uh, the sign's negative. And then I'm gonna just bring down the variables. Uh, eight times nine is 72. Negative times a negative is a positive. Bring down my variables. 8 times 7 is 56. Negative times a positive is a negative. Bring down my variables. 8 times 8 is 64. Negative times a negative is a positive. Bring down my variables. All right. Now I can combine variables that are the same. So this one is x squared y, and this one's x squared y. So I can combine these two. So I'm going to have x squared y in my answer. And now all I need to do is look at the coefficients. I've got 24 that's negative and 56 is negative. The signs are the same. So I add them and that's 80 and keep the sign. 56 plus 24 is 80 and you keep the sign. Now we're going to look at these two. They are the same as well. So x, y is going to be in my answer. Now I look at the coefficients, positive 72 and positive 64. Well, it's gonna be positive and we just add them. So that's seven plus six is 13, 136. That is my answer. All right, find the perimeter P 
of the rectangle and the square pictured below. Find your answer as much, simplify your answer as much as possible. Okay, so let's just, I'm going to label these um, A and B. So the perimeter for A is L. That's the perimeter is all the way around something. So from one point all the way back to that point is L plus W plus L plus W. Well, we can clean this up. The perimeter is equal to, remember, the coefficients in front of these are always one. So these are like terms. So that's one L plus one L. We know we're gonna have L in our answer. And one plus one is two. We have our W's that are the same. So W is gonna be my answer. The coefficients are one plus one and they are two. So we just created a formula for finding the perimeter for a rectangle. Okay. B is our square. <clears throat> And to find the perimeter is S plus S plus S plus S. Perimeter is S plus S plus S plus S. So all of these are the same and they all have a coefficient of one. So we know we're gonna have S in our answer and there's one plus one is two plus one is three plus one is four. We just created a formula for finding the perimeter of our square. Okay. You're going to want to have those written down somewhere. Perimeter of a rectangle, perimeter of a square. <clears throat> All right, let's find the length of a rectangle is three feet longer than twice its width. I need to draw this. The length of a triangle, so this can be our length and this can be our width. The length of a triangle, I'm sorry, of a rectangle, I keep saying triangle, is, the word is is an equal sign. Length is three feet longer than, well, that means plus three, twice its width, well, that's two times its width. Okay, so I'm just gonna clean that up real quick. That means the length is two W plus three. Find the perimeter P of the rectangle in terms of its width alone. Well, we're gonna go back <clears throat> and use our formula. The perimeter of a rectangle is 2L plus 2W. I'm going to write that. Perimeter is 2Ls plus 2Ws. 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. So our perimeter, we now know that L is 2W plus 3. <clears throat> so I substitute 2W plus 3 for where my L is and I'm gonna bring down my two W. When you have this, you have two times a binomial, so you have to distribute two times two W, two times two is four, and that's a W, and two times three is six. I'm gonna bring down my two W. Combining like terms, perimeter is equal to, we're gonna have a W, four plus two is six, and then plus six. That is our answer. Okay. Next one. The width of a rectangle, oops, width of a rectangle is, I mean, sorry, length is here. Width is, is, is equals two feet less than, so that's minus two, two feet less than its length. The length is L. Okay, so I'm going to use the same formula, P is equal to 2L plus 2W, and now where the W is, I'm going to substitute L minus 2. So P is equal to 2L plus 2 times the width is L minus 2. Okay, we have to distribute the two over the L minus two. So the perimeter is equal to two L plus, two times L is two L, two times two is four, positive times a negative is a negative. Okay, now we've got like terms to clean up. L is gonna be in our answer. The coefficients are two plus two, so that's four. And I'm just gonna bring down that minus four. That 
is the perimeter in terms of L. Okay. Oh, that's it. Oh, we made it. Goodness gracious, y'all. All right. You're going to have questions. Let me know what they are and let me help you. Take care and see you next time.